Here we go then, guys. Uh, I'm just going to do a comparison of the SATA 55X and the Wacom Geo. Uh, they're both 1.2. Um, we're both spraying uh, the same lacquer, which is Standox K9550. Um, and it's just a side by side comparison, really. Uh, I get a few questions about what gun's the best. You know, you get involved in these comments in. Uh, some forums and people will ask. Um, I personally really like the SATA. Um, you'll notice I disappeared for a little while and I went away to a new job and that's all we used. Um, phenomenal gun. Um, this one is the 1.20. Uh, previously I was using the 1.2i. I prefer the i. I like a big pattern. This is the O which will be similar to the SATA 5000 and 4000 before that. Um, and some, some specs on the gun. Like I say, it's a 1.2, um, but at 29 PSI, the SATA RP requires 10 CFM, which is cubic feet of air a minute, and that is just literally how much air it needs to run it. So if you've got a gun that's 15 CFM, that's 425 litres of air a minute, and if your compressor is a 100 litre tank, you're going to run that four and a quarter times a minute. So you just need to understand that when you're buying a new gun, your CFM requirements, your physical output of your compressor. So if you can imagine trying to run this through one of these little 25 litre um, compressors, you, it's not going to have a good time. So keep that in mind when you're buying a spray gun. Uh, like I say, the, the RP is 10 CFM and the SATA HVLP is 15 CFM. So it needs a little bit more juice. Um, the RP does stand for reduced pressure, and HVLP is high volume, low pressure. Um, back to the comparison though, um, this gun is just beautiful. You can see how nicely it lies down, the clear. It goes on super flat and smooth, um, so I'm not really trying to do anything other than just put two coats on, and the gun does the rest for me basically. It atomizes phenomenally. Um, as you can see from the first coat, you know, there's there's already a finish on there. If I was being really stingy, I could just left it. But, you know, that's not really how I like to do things. We'll give it the two full coats and make sure it's got the protection it needs. But just just look at it. If, if I was going to buy another gun, and if I do in the future, I will buy the SATA 55X. Um, I did forgot to mention... At the beginning, you'll see on the pressure, on the digital gauge, I'm doing this at 2.2 bar. Just a little bit more. It does over-atomize a little bit and waste a little. Uh, more of it will go into the air, but look at that finish. Phenomenal gun. Like I said, I wouldn't hesitate to buy one. Um, other than the fact that knowing your CFM requirements, so um, in a big body shop, you know, that's not really going to matter. You'll probably have a huge compressor somewhere with a large air receiver, so this gun will be perfect. And you'll just see the, the glove trick that I always go back to, just checking the lower lower parts of the door, make sure it's even, but phenomenal. What a gun. SATA 55X 1.20. Uh, moving on, I'm going to use the SATA Geo. Um, this isn't traditionally their lacquer gun. It's a good all-rounder. Uh, it's good for base, clear, solvent, and water. So, um, I, 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 this is my go-to gun. I do have the HVLP for clear, um, but you know I've done a few candy jobs or tinted clears with this, and I prefer the way this lies down. Um, I'll give you some specs on that as well. So the Walcom Geo at 29 psi, and I keep saying 29 psi. That's two bar. I hear a lot of people talking in psi, so that's why I favour that. Um, but 29 PSI, this gun is 15 CFM. So again, it's going to be 425 litres of air a minute. This gun needs just to run it at that two bar. The uh, Walcom HTE, their clear coat version of this gun, um, requires 13.4 CFM. So the HTE is high transfer efficiency. Um, it does have a slightly you know, better CFM ratio, but that still needs... 380 litres of air a minute so again going to use one at home you're going to want something lower depending on how big your compressor is um, but this gun I really enjoy the way it lays down 
The first coat is real, real smooth, um, which is what you want when you're building up your second coat on top of your first coat. You want your first coat to be as smooth as possible, and this gun does this for me. Um, really works with my style as well, so I'm happy to call this my clear coat gun. You just see as well getting in the backs. I like to treat the backs of the doors the same as the fronts. Really trying to get under there, make sure it's all nice. I wonder what your thoughts are as well. Uh, you know, are you all more DIY guys, or are you guys in big shops as well? Let me know in the comments, and um, I can sort of tailor what I'm doing towards that. I'm considering doing a list of guns and their CFM ratings and sort of compressors and stuff. I might show you my compressor um, and j and just go through what I've been using at home and you know how it performs. Um, I do the well. I used to paint uh, crash helmets for racing drivers at home um, and I would use a, a large spray gun but you got to consider using um, the right tool for the job because a helmet's only just a bit bigger than your head I'm not trying to lacquer out two doors or the side of a car so y your big guns are not bad in those situations Don't forget the mirror caps. Just had a wee batch of these at work where people run back over to you. Have you got any paint left? Because we haven't put the mirror cap in, which is always fun. So, coming in for the second coat. You can see the first coat. Like I was saying with the SATA, it, it's lovely. It's pretty much a finish on its own. But you'll see my overlap here is slightly tighter. Maybe not 50-50, but sort of three quarters overlap and slowed down ever so slightly the hand movement. But this is where I get that real shine. I find the first coat with this gun goes on a little thin. Um, more of a sort of 70% coat, but it's perfectly smooth. It's really, really flat, which allows me to get my second coat on and give it a real good, um, good coat and, and achieve that finish that I'm looking for. I always kind of joke to people that I'm a bit of a tart when it comes to this sort of thing. I want the jobs clean, as clean as they can go. Get the lacquer on as nicely as it can and then that way I'm not sort of polishing out orange peel or, you know, dealing with loads of dirt and nibs and stuff. So the, the cleaner that you can get them on the way in, the better they come on the way out. And that's always sort of been a philosophy of mine. I was saying in another video, I started out in D Fleet centers where, you know, when I eventually got onto the paint line, I was the painter and that was that. It was kind of you paint, 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 and you never really polished much or done much prep. But I moved into an insurance shop like this, uh, some, some call them smash shops. Um, but when I moved into the insurance game, you done all your own prep and all your own polishing. And then you realize pretty quickly that you know, we were paid bonuses at the time and I would make all my bonus on the back end on the cleaning, you know, the, very, very quickly, the first or second week, you're in there, you're like, oh, there's, there's a couple more nibs than I'd like in here. You know, I'm, I'm spending half an hour polishing when it should only be a selective D nib, so that really forced me to step my game up in making sure the jobs were clean and making sure that they go out right first time, obviously, if you're in in a situation where you're being paid bonus, it's fantastic. But as soon as you, you know, mess up, which it does happen, you're on the back foot then. Yeah, you know, you're chasing your tail all day. So one of my my big tips that I give to people is just slow down, spend ten minutes making sure it's clean before you start painting, and then you save twenty minutes on the back end. Um, you know, some jobs that I'll do, if it takes me longer to get the polisher and the polishing equipment out than it does to do the D-nib, then I won't bother. The chances of a customer seeing the nib, it, you know, it, it is quite slim, especially when the whole panel is done. Um, so, you know, it's more one of them. If they do find it, it, you'll run out to the car park or whatever and just say, sorry, I've, you know, I've missed one, my bad, but it, it never happens. 
So, I mean, look at, look at that reflection. And that's the first coat. I'm just coming up on the second coat over here. And that's where I'll get that, that real good gloss level. You know, the, the gloss level's bad, but I'll get that second coat on. I'll get my male thickness in the in the film. And, you know, I was a happy chap with this one. There wasn't much to do on it, like I say. Selective denib, one or two per panel. Send it out the door. Well, send it to the fit up team, and they'll they'll put it back together. I'm not the best at that, to be fair. Which I, I wish I was. I wish I'd done a bit more um, on the other sides of it. But the thing is, when when you're good, you know, when you're good at your job, they're not going to take you away from it to do other things. So uh, fortunate, I'm I'm good at painting and. You know, I always sort of get left alone to do my thing, but obviously other things on the other sides of the job sort of suffered. Not that I can't use a span or anything like that, it's just one of them. And the keen-eyed viewer here will notice I didn't do the front of the door on the first <laughs> on the first pass, which um, I've just remembered myself, to be honest, in this video. Just remembered now doing the voiceover as well. I did I did forget, so I've put a coat on here. On the front, um, I'll do my mirror cover and I'll run round the back of the door, and then that way, the the front's got a little time to dry off. Um, I do like to leave five minutes in between my coats. That's usually where I'll cut the camera, but it's it's five minutes in between coats, and then I um, come back in and put a second coat on it. So, making sure the mirror's done. And I'll come back in now with the second coat on the front. I I did run out there to um, put some more clear in the gun. I thought I'd mixed enough, but obviously not. Um, and I think that's a thing as well. Using using these guns that are more efficient, you don't because the paint goes on flat. You're not trying to overload it to get a finish. Um, I'll need to break out my Devilbus at one point. Um, I was saying that. With that, you probably, I recall trying to put two wet coats on to get that, almost to flood it out to get that finish. But because these guns are more efficient and give a flatter finish, um, you're not using as much material because the gun's doing a lot of the work. Um, and yeah, this is that uh, about the end for the comparison. Um, you know, I'm using my Geo here, and I love it. Um, but I do, I do like the Sartre, and I will consider buying one of them in the future. Uh, here's a little look round the job, you know, you can see it's it's pretty clean. It's a, it's a nice job. Um, and again, this sort of performed really well, so I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate to buy either of these guns. It'll just be, you know, budget dependent, I suppose. Not that not that this gun's cheap either. Both of them are quite expensive guns, but time saved in the booth, you know, it's what we want. You know, these, these guns make me look good. So, lovely. You know, just get in there and look at that. You know, there's a little peel in it, but, you know, your factory jobs look like that. They, some of them look worse, to be honest, these days, let's be fair. But I'm, I'm really happy with this. Real clean. And the guns perform great, so... Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you want to see.